Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to build your very own chatbot. And this chatbot is built with a package called Chatterbot. And you can find that on PyPy. So you just type in pip install Chatterbot. And the documentation is all online for you to go ahead and take a look at. All right, so let's give this a shot and see exactly what this chatbot does. So I can say something like, hey, I can say, tell me a joke. It says, did you hear the one about the mountain goes in the Andes? It was, anyways, so this is a pretty bad joke. But at the end of the day, it does do that. Now, there's other things I can do with this chatbot as well. For example, I can do mathematical computations. I can say, what is 5 times 5? And I'll say it's 25. Or I can write it like this. I can say, what is 5 times 5? And it'll say that's 25. I can do something like what is and just make up some random numbers here. That divided by that. Now you do have to keep a space in between this. And it'll give me the answer to that, which is great. Now this chatbot can also do some conversion. So I can say how many hours are in a day, for example. And it'll tell me 24. Now keep in mind, I haven't hard coded this anywhere. This is all taught. So we use machine learning for this. Um, and this has all taught all these specific answers and how to do all these computations. So it's not hard coded anywhere. But now it gets interesting. So what I've also done in Chatterbot is you can also go ahead and create something called custom filters. So this is what the Chatterbot app really looks like. So I built it in Flask for, this, for the sake of demonstration. And it actually comes with something called best match. And what it does is every single time I try to put in a search or type in something, it'll go ahead and query that, use natural language understanding. It'll try to query it and match it to its corpus of existing answers, which I'll walk through in a second as well. Now in here, I can also go ahead and add the mathematical evaluator that allows me to go and do the five times five stuff and the unit converter. Now what I've done is I've actually gone ahead and custom coded my own profanity adapter as well as the COVID-19 adapter, which I'm going to demonstrate to you in a second. So what the profanity adapter does, it'll look for a bunch of keywords right here that you can see. For the sake of demonstration, I'm just going to use maybe the word dumb or something like that. And we'll put it in here. And if you've sworn a couple of times, it'll actually start giving you a warning. And after, you know, you've done it a few times, let's say you've used excessive language. And the goal would be to terminate the chat. I haven't coded that in here yet, but essentially it'll display that text. And... At the end of the day, what's supposed to happen is the chat is just supposed to close down on its own. And then the COVID-19 adapter, what I've done is I built that specifically for Canada. And what that allows me to do is I can go ahead and query any single province that I want to query. And what it's looking for is it's looking for the words COVID cases or today. And again, using natural language understanding. So I don't have to type in that exact format. I can always go ahead and type a proper sentence and it's going to try to get these words out of there. And if I don't supply it some kind of a province, then it's going to say, ask again, because you didn't include a province. And then once you do, it will include the province. And very shortly, I'm going to walk you through the actual machine learning aspect of this and how this actually is a machine learning model. Because right now, it kind of feels a little bit like a rules-based model. And one thing I will say is this is more of a transactional AI. And what that means is you ask it one question and it gives you back an answer. Now, there's also more complex types of AIs, which I'll walk through in another video, which are more conversational AIs that actually use utterances and stories. And in that, it'll actually store the last answer. So it'll actually understand and have a little bit of context of what you're asking for. So you can actually have that back and forward question answer. So that's possible as well. But that's out of scope for today because this is what I would call a simple toy bot. So let's go back and start asking it some questions. So first, we're going to give it some profanity. All right, so we're going to use this word stupid here. So I'm going to go back here and I'm just going to type in the word stupid. And it's going to say, warning number one, please do not use profanity and so forth. Now, if I were to use that word again, it's going to say warning number two. And then after this, it's going to actually say I'm terminating the chat, in which case I haven't coded it yet, but I would just go ahead and close this chat down so you couldn't use it anymore. And the way this works is it's basically the way that I've coded it is that it's any one of these words. So if I use any one of these profanity words at any point in time, I can even use it in a sentence, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh this. So for example, I'll type in, hey, stupid. And it's going to give me that warning again. And I'll say, hey, dumb. 
I don't give me that warning again. So all it's doing is it's actually taking this word, it's using natural language understanding by reading this word, getting out all the keywords out of here and comparing it to what's in our code. So the profanity adapter, like I said, is just something that I coded for fun. It's not something that's included in the original package. Um, again, I custom coded this myself. I can put this on GitHub. You guys can take a look at it as an example. Now, this one is a little bit more involved. It's the COVID-19 adapter. And for this one, I, again, custom coded this as well. But this one's more specific, like I said, to provinces. And I'm what I'm doing is I'm actually leveraging an API. So every single time I go ahead and put in some kind of a query for this, it's going to check to make sure that, first of all, I've used the word COVID cases and today somewhere in the chat. And then that I've also supplied a province. So let me go ahead and show you this. Okay, so what are the COVID cases today? It's going to say ask again, but please include the province name too. So I'm going to say what are the COVID cases in Ontario? Now, because I forgot to use the word today, it's actually going to say I don't understand that. We can always fix that later on, and that's where the machine learning comes in. So now I'm going to ask it properly again. What are the COVID cases in Ontario today? So now it's going to say the change in cases today. It's basically 1,400-ish cases. Now I can do the same thing and say, what are the COVID cases in Manitoba today? And I'll say the changes is 494. So again, if I don't provide it a province, it asks me or pegs me to do it. And if I do, it'll actually go ahead and search it for that. And again, going back here, it's basically pulling this API. And the way that it works is I've said today is obviously today's date. And I said, let's go back two days and let's get that change in Delta. And that is basically going to give me my difference. So the way it actually quotes you is it quotes you total cases per day. So if I take the total for today minus the total for yesterday, that's going to give me the delta between today and yesterday. And it's also doing a bit of an error check here. It's saying if the status code is equal to 200, so 200 basically means that the APIs returned a good status code, then give it a confidence of one, otherwise give it a confidence of zero. Now this confidence is actually very, very important in this. And the reason why it's important is because that's ultimately going to determine which answer gets returned back. So what it's going to do is remember up here, we actually specified if I go back here that I want the threshold to be roughly 80. Here, what I'm saying is there's no question that the confidence is just 100%. So make sure that if I actually get a response back, set the confidence to 100% and then do all of this funny math down here. Now that's how this works. So let's talk a little bit about how the machine learning piece comes in. If I go over here, I'm going to open up the directory where all this is stored. Okay, so I've got this folder called Chatterbox. And again, in order for me to train this, I actually have an entire corpus here. And in this corpus, I have a set of pre-trained questions um, that range anything from food to greetings to health. Now, this actually comes with the actual application. You can install it, and it will give you all of this great stuff in there as well. So for example, if I go ahead and open up something like gossip, this is all pre-trained data that comes with the, with the corpus itself. And what it's basically doing is every time I'm asked this question, it's going to give me an answer. But again, when we're looking at that 0.8 number over here, it's actually going to take your question and it's going to say, how closely does it align to some of the questions that are in here? And let me go back and pick the right answer based on that. And the higher your threshold, the more it's going to scrutinize the actual similarity between the two. And the lower the threshold, the more lenient it's going to be. All right. So again, this still seems like a whole bunch of rules where I've hard coded this stuff. So again, where's the machine learning? Well, the machine learning really sits in this database. So let's go ahead and open this database. It's an SQLite 3 database that it creates. So what I want to do is I actually want to show you how this works. Now, again, how depends on how you actually want to design your machine learning algorithm. You can either get this to self-learn. And what that means is as this database populates, every single conversation that's happening, it's actually recording it. Every single question that's getting answered, it's actually recording it. Every single answer that you have, it's recording it. So it's recording a whole bunch of data here. And you'll see right here, all of these questions that we just asked this AI. So let's go down to the bottom. And we were talking about things like, what are the COVID cases, for example? Uh, it, it'll give you the answer. It'll give you everything here. Now, the reason why this is important is you can actually go ahead and if there's certain 
scenarios where the answer was subpar or just didn't answer things, you can always go back and look at the question itself and ask yourself, what do you want the bot to answer? And a lot of the times you actually don't know what questions people are going to ask. So this is actually a gold mine of data on its own about the types of questions people ask. And then you can go ahead and automate things. So for example, if people are using profanity, you probably don't want to automate anything around there. But if people are actually legitimately asking questions and your bot doesn't seem to be doing the greatest job, you can always go ahead and see what is the ideal answer you want to have back. Now, initially, there's going to be a lot of work in creating this and scrubbing this data. So, you know, nobody said that creating these AI bots is actually going to be easy or straightforward or simple. It's going to take some time. But you can automate some of that for sure as well. And through that, you can say if, for example, I have these specific words in my questions, I want it more to tailor to these kind of answers. So you can automate that as well. So I'll give you an example. If, for example, I had something like, hey, hi, hello, and I had those three specific questions that were answered and my bot didn't have an answer before, then actually I can go ahead and train it to say in either one of those scenarios, I want it to basically give back a specific answer. And then you can start categorizing your questions and saying, okay, do I group it into things like how they grouped it in here? And so when I look at my greetings, they eventually said, okay, I'm going to start categorizing everything by computers or conversations or emotions or whatever it may be. And again, that's how it's going to learn. So I can, like I said, take the input from these questions and actually start automating it. And eventually over time, you can actually build a self-learning algorithm. And that is, it'll actually take a look at the question and say, if I don't have an answer for it today, I'm going to retrain it again on some common questions or very similar questions that have very similar answers. And in order to train it, it's actually very straightforward. You would go ahead and close your Flask application in this case. And just the way I've coded it, I've just got to go ahead and comment this out. You would then just go ahead and run this command. You'd say python train.py. And what you're going to see here is you're going to see a whole bunch of different things that it's going to start training it on. So you see it's going to train on ai.yaml. So that's something that I created myself. Uh, and then bot profiles, computers, and so forth. So it'll actually start training it. So eventually over time, you're going to start building your corpus more and more over time. And that's really where the machine learning comes from. You're teaching this machine how to respond to those answers. So we're just going to let this finish training because I can't really run my Flask applications with it without this uh, finishing right now. And the minute it's done, we'll go ask some more questions. We'll ask some questions on movies or some trivia or something like that. So let's go back and rerun this. Okay, so let's go back to our application here, reset it. Oh, and this here is also a variable as well. So I can actually go ahead and over here, it says that my bot name is actually called Bob. I can put something like Norman, for example. Let's just try that. Hit save, and then we're just going to rerun this bot. And I'm running it again. So let's go back, hit refresh. And now it says, hi, I'm Norman. And you can basically create a list of different names in here so that anytime that if you do ever want to put something like this in production, the name will also change as well as different people interact with it. So let's say, what is Spider-Man? So a comic book story made into a movie. So we'll say, what is AI? It says artificial intelligence, so it explains that. So we can ask it a whole bunch of different questions. Um, what is the best movie? I don't know if this is going to return an answer. So it says, I'm sorry, but I do not understand. And so the beauty here is the database has captured this. What is the best movie? And it's also captured the, this response as well, which is great because I can go into the database and query every single question that generated this response, which means that I don't exactly have a suitable answer for this just yet. Now I can go ahead online and search for that and just automate the response if I wanted. If it's just a generic question like, what is the best movie? I mean, you can put whatever you want, but if it's something like, what is Spider-Man? You can get a generic response and there's no harm to that. And finally, we'll do one more. We'll say, what is the best food? All right, that didn't work. So let me say, tell me some gossip. Okay, so it's telling me some gossip. Now, what I'm curious is how many times or how many different types of answers you would have fed this? So in this case, it's going to give you the same answer because it's only been trained on this one time. Oh, no, but it gave me something different here. Context is hard, so it's a little bit different. So it will give you a different answer. But if I do something like, hi, so let's just repeat this a couple of times. And eventually, it's going to start changing its response as well. And you can always program it so that you don't have this rep repeating three different times. You can have it one after the other. But again, this is a really cool bot. Um, 
and eventually I'm also going to add it here so that I can just say turn off my kitchen lights and it'll do that as well. Um, but very introductory little bot. So again, this is what I would call more of a transactional bot. Really good for things like an FAQ page. If you want to go and you want to just query something on a page and you want to ask a question like what is your pricing? You know, this is a great way to do it where the answer is a little bit more defined and it doesn't have to do a lot of thinking in terms of what the person's trying to get at. In one of the next video, we're actually going to use the Raza framework and in that we're going to build a conversational AI that's going to have things like utterances, it's going to have stories and all that other stuff. So it's going to be a lot more complex. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye bye.